In this video, we're going to learn everything there is to know about hash tables. We're going to learn how they work. We're going to see a demonstration of one, and we're going to see how to implement them. And we're going to do all of this in Python. Hash tables look similar to arrays. They work very differently internally. Arrays store collections of data. And to access one of those items of data, we, we just need to know the index of that data in the array. A hash table also stores a collection of data. But the good thing about a hash table is we don't need to know where in the hash table a particular item is stored. In a hash table, all we need to know is the item's key. A hash table is made up of buckets internally. You can see we have a hash table here with three buckets. And when we want to store something in our hash table, we want to figure out which bucket it belongs in. So I take my key and I pass it to a hash function. And a hash function is just a function which takes any arbitrary data and returns a number. If we pass the string hello to that function, we get the number zero. That tells us the key hello maps to the bucket zero. Next, we want to store the value one, two, three in our hash table, and we want to be able to retrieve that value using the key test. So we pass test to our hash function again. That returns us another number, which in this case is two, and we store the value one, two, three in the bucket two. Let's try another one. We have the key Francis. We want to map that to the string example. We pass the word Francis to the hash function again, and we get the number zero again. So what's happened here is we've got a collision. That's what happens when two keys map to the same bucket. Uh, and that causes a problem for our hash table because that's going to make things really inefficient. Ideally, what we want is we want one bucket for every value in our table. And that's what makes hash tables so fast because all we need to do is we need to hash the key that tells us which bucket to look in, and we just go and grab the value out of that bucket. When we have a collision, we still store the value in the bucket according to the hash table. So the value Francis is still going to be put in bucket zero. But you can see now bucket zero has two elements in it. So this is going to make retrieving values out of bucket zero much less efficient than if we had just mapped the values evenly across the hash tables. But now because we've got multiple values sharing a bucket, we have to do a linear search on the bucket to be able to retrieve any values out of it. Collisions are inevitable, but we want to avoid them. And we can avoid them by having a large hash table with lots of buckets and by having a good hash function. Now what I want to do is I want to look up a value in the table. So I want to look up the value Francis. And this is going to be slow because we have multiple values sharing the same bucket. Again, what I do is I hash the key. That tells me which bucket to look in. And if I only had one value in the bucket, I could stop now and then I would be finished and I could return the value. But because there are multiple values in this bucket, I have to scan the whole bucket until I find what I'm looking for. So the first thing we do is we compare Francis with the key hello and we see that that doesn't match. So the next thing we do is we move to the next element in the bucket. We compare Francis with Francis and we see that that matches. So we find what we are looking for. Let's see an example implementation of a hash table. I've used Python for this and I have a, a small demo. So this is just a, an interactive demo. And if I type in new, it will create a new hash table. I've called it a map, but maps and hash tables are the same thing. And what I want to do is I want to print out the hash table. And you can see we have eight buckets and we've used zero buckets. So let's store a value in our hash table. And what I've done is I've stored the value example in the hash table and I've used the key Francis. So let's print the hash table again. And you can see that was stored in bucket number five. So let's add another value. So we've mapped the word hello to the word world and we print the table again. And we can see that was stored in bucket number three. And we haven't actually got any collisions yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up and you can see there's a, a function here called add random. And what that will do is add 100 random elements of data to the table. So if I add random, you can see we added 100 values to the hash table and we print that. And what it's done is it's added 100 values. It's also automatically resized the hash table for us. Resizing a hash table is actually quite an expensive operation. When you resize a hash table, you have to reinsert all of the existing values into the new larger table before you're able to start inserting new values. Collisions are inevitable, but we can reduce the number of them by making our table bigger. So if I resize the table and make it 512 elements instead of 128, and I print it again, we should see far fewer collisions. So we have a lot of empty space in the table, but we have a lot of single values in the buckets, which is what we want. We have many, many fewer collisions than we had previously. If I resize it again, I'll say, I'll make it 4,096 buckets. But of course, this has a trade-off. We use a lot more memory and our table has a lot of empty space. 
but looking up a value in this table would be extremely fast because there doesn't appear to be very many collisions anymore. So let's look up a value. So I stored the value example and I used the key Francis. So if I get that value out, we get the word example and we look up this key here. So let's look up this one and we get the same. Let's look up a value that doesn't exist and we just get none. Let's look at how we actually implement a hash table in Python. I have my demo script here and I've actually wrapped the hash table implementation in a, a Python module and all the code will be available on GitHub. So there are basically three aspects to our hash table map class. We have an entry class, which is what we call each entry in our bucket. So each entry would be one of these blue rectangles. And then we have a bucket class, which is what we use for our buckets. So when we create a map, the first thing we do is we initialize all of the buckets. Hash tables usually have a really simple API. They usually just have two methods. They have a put method and a get method. And that's what I was using here. So there's get and there's put. So put is used for storing values and get is used for retrieving them. Here is our put method. Basically, the first thing we do is check if the hash table is full. If it is, we resize it and we double its size. Then we calculate the hash of the key. This is how we calculate which bucket to insert the element into. The next thing we do after we've calculated the hash is we divide it by the size of our hash table. So we divide it by the number of buckets that we have. That will restrict the range of our hash to be between zero and the number of buckets in the hash map. So once we've figured out which bucket to use, we access that bucket. So down here, we just call bucket.add and that adds the entry to the bucket. And we also keep track of the number of buckets that we've used. That's when we know to resize the hash table. To retrieve values from the hash table is pretty similar to inserting them. We basically just calculate the hash. We divide it by the size of our hash table and take the remainder. Then we just retrieve the bucket out of our array of buckets and we search the bucket for the value we're looking for. And this is the operation that can take a long time if we have a lot of collisions. When we want to resize the hash table, we basically just create a new one that's twice as big as the old one. And we reinsert all the old entries into the new table. We create a new map that it's twice as big as the old one. And then we loop through all of the buckets and all of the entries and we just insert them one by one into the new hash table. Our hash function is pretty simple. We start with a prime number and then what we do is we loop over each character in the key and we multiply it by another prime number and then we add on the numeric ASCII value of the character. By multiplying by prime numbers, we get a much more evenly distributed hash table, which is one way we prevent collisions. Buckets are actually just linked lists. When we want to add an entry to the bucket, we actually have to check whether it's already in the bucket because we don't want duplicates. So what we do is we iterate over our bucket, which is just a linked list, until we either find the entry that we want to replace or we get to the end of the bucket and then we, we insert a new one. And that's what we do here. So if the bucket's empty, then we just uh, add our new entry. If the entry is already in the bucket, we just overwrite the value. And if it's not been found, then we add the entry onto the end of the bucket. And then to find a value in the bucket, it's just normal linked list processing. We loop over the linked list. And if we get to the end and we have a value, we return it. Otherwise, we return null. And entry is pretty straightforward. It's just a small wrapper class that wraps keys and values. So that's it for this video. I'm going to put all this code up on GitHub. There'll be a link in the description. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.